Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great and that you're keeping mentally safe and healthy. So today is going to be a DIY lounger set because let's face it, all we're doing nowadays is lounging around the house. You don't have to lounge around in that t-shirt you've been wearing for 60 days. Yes, I am talking to you, Jessica. It's time to change out of that oversized t-shirt. And I thought I'd show you guys how to make a cute two-piece lounger set. So I thrifted this hoodie for $5 like last year. I've had it for ages and I turned it into this beautiful two-piece set. Look at that. You went from being a bum to a baddie and you're still staying at home slaying the home game. Honey, let me tell you, your television is going to appreciate this outfit. Your bathroom is going to appreciate this outfit. Your living room, you can wear this everywhere and feel like a princess, a comfortable princess. I really love how this turned out. This set is super comfortable so if you want to make one for yourself, let me show you how to. First things first, you're going to mark the point you want your cropped hoodie and your shorts to start. So where you want your hoodie to end and your shorts to start. I chose that point, I marked it to the piece of chalk. And I'm just going to draw a straight line across that point to evenly divide my hoodie into pieces. And I struggled to make this line straight. Let me tell you, I cannot draw a straight line to save my life. If someone had a gun to my head and told me to draw a straight line, that is the end of fashion wizardry. Anyway, I tweaked it, made it some straight and then I cut off the piece of excess fabric. So now with the hoodie you're just going to stretch her a bit, make sure you're putting her through the trials and tribulations of life and that she's ready and once you've done that you are done with your top. So now to move on to the beauty of this set, it's the shorts. So for the bottom bit I took my seam ripper, seam ripped off the waistband, I also seam ripped off the pocket bit because we do not need her, she is retired, we need to give her her space to just live her life. So now we're going to work on this piece which is where we're going to obtain our shorts bits. So I turned her upside down just to get a feel of the land and see exactly how she was feeling. She was accepting of what I was about to do. Wow, that sounded weird. Anyway, I took a pair of shorts and I folded this to make sure I had a beautiful template to use. So I just folded it in half and I folded this in half towards the back because I wanted to have that curve. I just felt like the back is a bit more loose. So I wanted to use that as my template and I placed that on top of my piece of fabric and I outlined the shape. That way I could have one pair, no, that way I could have one set of my shorts legs. Is that what you'd call them? I don't know. You'll see what I mean in a second. Once the shape was outlined and I was happy with it, it was time to cut out the fabric. I was not going to hold her back from being great. It was time to let her move on to the next chapter of her life. So I'm just cutting her out, making sure everything is nice and neat. And with the other piece, I rotated it upside down. As you can see, the shape is awkward and to get an equal piece, we have to rotate it. So just finesse this, do what you have to do. And once you are satisfied, I just cut out the shape of fabric and you will have two sets of short legs if that's what you call them. Now you have two pieces. It's actually four pieces, but they're still joined together. So we're going to seam rip the side to open it up and make sure we separate this two. It's time for them to let go. The relationship isn't working anymore. So the reason I decided to seam rip instead of cutting is one, I have the time. So do not cut this. You want to preserve as much fabric as possible. And honestly, let's be honest, you have nothing to do either. You're just at home. So take your seam ripper and seam rip your heart away. If you use you're going to lose a bit of fabric and every bit of fabric counts because you want this shorts to be nice and loose. So once you've seam ripped both pieces, you're going to have four pieces of fabric and we're going to work on this set. So I'm going to put them right sides together. That way I can pin everyone together and everyone's happy. The union we're about to make here is for life. So we're just making sure these two pieces are perfect for each other. They're the perfect fit. So I'm just pinning everything together, making sure no one is out when we should be so social distancing because hashtag I don't want to go to prison and I'm going to repeat this with the other two pieces and now you're going to sew along the area you pinned and your shorts will start to come to life like Cinderella. Wow, I don't know what Cinderella I've been watching, but yeah. So I used my serger for this project, but if you don't have a serger, just use your sewing machine, use your zigzag stitch, and you will have a beautiful pair of shorts. I wanted to let my serger shine, and I'm still learning how to use it, so I thought this would be good practice, and I really 
really love how the shorts came out. So now once you've surged both curves, you're going to have something that looks like this. When you open the two pieces, the shorts are now starting to make sense. So I'm putting the pieces on top of each other, right sides together, because we need to sew this together. So I'm just going to pin the edges together. That way when we sew, everything is nice and easy. We don't have problems. No one is disrespecting the judge when we're trying to get the minimal sentence for our crimes. So I'm just making sure everyone is in the right place, pinning the edges of the fabric together. I was watching a show at this point. I'm watching Community Guys and it's so dope. Are you guys watching it on Netflix? It's amazing. Anyway, once both edges were pinned, I'm now going to pin the crotch bit because you cannot have crotchless shorts unless that's kind of your style. And if it is, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. So I'm just pinning the crotch bit together. And once I realized my pins were the other way and sewing would be a problem, I changed their direction and that was really easy to do. So now it's time to sew along all the areas you have pins. That way you can have a pair of shorts. So surging, as you can see, I'm quite slow. I'm still learning how to use my serger. I've had it for a few months and this thing has a knife in it and it's crazy sharp. So if you decide to use your serger, if you're not like an expert, just be careful because I did snip my finger a bit, but nothing too serious. And once you've surged the sides, you're going to surge the crotch bit. And the secret to surging this bit without having to cut off a lot of fabric is just make sure everything is straight. So as you can see, I'm holding the bit straight and passing it through my serger in a straight line. That way it can just surge in a straight line and everything is nice and neat. Once everything is nice and surged, we now have a pair of shorts. They're starting to make sense, as you can see, but they're going to be super loose at the waist. So remember that waistband we ripped off? I measured it around my waist and then cut off the excess. That way I'd have a measurement that was the perfect fit for my waist. And this was about 21 inches. I wish I'd gone a bit smaller because it was still a bit loose, but hey, comfy does not have to be skin tight. So I'm fine with it. And I am just going to serge those two ends together to make sure this is one big loop. Once everything is nice and surged, it's now time to attach this to your pair of shorts. So all I'm doing now is I'm marking the midpoints and I just did this by following the back seam and then dividing this into quarters. That way we have four points and this will just make it easier to attach your waistband to your shorts. So there are the four points. We now have this divided equally and that seam is one point. So I rotated my waistband upside down, but she is the right way out and I'm putting her into my shorts that way the right sides are kissing make sure the right sides are together you do not want to sew this and the waistband is looking off so make sure the right sides are together and I'm just pinning the points I marked in place with the seams so one point went to the side seam one point went to the back seam the other point went to the side seam and so on so the four points you got is to just make sure when you're stretching your fabric as you sew everything is nice and aligned so so that's the final point and as you can see I aligned it to one seam and you're just going to pin that together and trust me this makes your sewing process so much easier so please please do it otherwise you're going to be having wonkily gathered fabric which is not cute so you're just going to sew all around and as you sew you're going to stretch the shorts that way they fit the waistband remember the waistband is smaller than your shorts and you want them to look perfect so make sure you stretch 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 this this is going to be a workout you're welcome so when I'm at the serger I took out my pins obviously you don't want to sew over pins and as you can see I'm really stretching that fabric making sure I'm getting that arm workout in because let's face it gyms are closed we need to find an alternative so I'm just stretching stretching my fabric and once you do this all the way around you will have successfully attached your waistband to your shorts look at that beauty she is gorgeous and when you turn this the right way out you now have a pair of lounge shorts. They are super cute and I love how they turned out. So this last step is definitely optional, but I do it to add some style and some flair to my shorts. So I just cuff the bottom and you can stitch this in place so that you don't have to recuff every time you wear your shorts. And once you're happy with your cuffs, you are now done with your set and look at that beauty. She is gorgeous. I love this top. I love cropped stuff. I live in cropped stuff and I see myself wearing this with a pair of jeans and looking cute and in the meantime with my shorts and look at those shorts they are the star of the show and they're super simple to make I am so in love with how they turned out and this lounge set I'm going to
to be living in this. I love it. I love it. And I hope you do too. And you can make this from a sweatshirt, an oversized sweatshirt, an oversized t-shirt. Just be creative and see what happens. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you'll be making this lounge set. It's time for me to retreat back into my cocoon of watching Netflix shows and seeing people post their banana bread on Instagram. Honestly, what is it with this pandemic that has everyone baking banana bread? It blows my mind. But hey, I'm still going to be drooling over the banana bread pictures. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys stay sane and safe and that I'll be seeing you in my next video. Until then, bye guys. Bye.